Hello everyone, I, Dr. Kancha Bansil, resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis in Subharti Medical College, Merit, is going to present my oral paper on the topic Role of MRI in Evaluation of Cervical Cancer. The aims of this paper is to study the MRI findings of cervical carcinoma and to correlate the imaging findings with clinical pathological findings. The cervical cancer is the second most common gynecological malignancy worldwide. In India, 160 million women between the age of 30 to 59 years are at risk of developing carcinoma cervix. The main risk factors include the early age at first quarters, having multiple sexual partners, sexually transmitted HPV infections, cigarette smoking, and the use of oral contraceptive pills. For the MRI, the axial, surgical, and coronal weighted images are taken. T2 weighted images are taken. The axial images are taken perpendicular to the endocervical canal. The coronal images are parallel to the endocervical canal and it helps to see if there is disease spread to the vagina. The major role of MRI is for the local staging of the tumor, for defining the pelvic tumor extent, the depth of the stromal invasion, the lymph node status and if there is any metastasis. According to the latest 2018 FIGO guidelines, the carcinoma cervix is divided into four stages. In this, the stage one, the carcinoma is strictly confined to the cervix. In stage two, the carcinoma invades beyond the uterus but has not extended onto the lower third of or the vagina or to the pelvic wall. In stage 3, the carcinoma involves the lower third of the vagina and extends to the pelvic wall or causes hydronephrosis or non-functioning kidney or involves pelvic or parapeotic lymph nodes. While in stage 4, the carcinoma is extended beyond the true pelvis and has involved the bladder or the rectum. In stage 4a, there is involvement of only the adjacent pelvic organs, while in stage 4b, there is spread to the distant organs. In this study, uh, the study design was descriptive observational study. The study period was from April 2022 to September 2022. It was conducted in the Department of Radio Diagnosis in Subhati Hospital Merit in association with Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Department of Pathology. A sample size of 10 patients were included in this study. The inclusion criteria was all women of suspected cervical cancer with first, first presentation of abnormal uterine bleeding that were attending the gynecology OPD and were referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis. The exclusion criteria was patients with a previously diagnosed case of cervical malignancy or the patients who didn't give the consent to participate in the study. In the study, it was seen that the mean age of presentation of the patients was around 56 years and all the patients presented with the normal uterine bleeding and on examination it was seen that the cervix was bulky on a per speculum and per vaginal examination and bleeded on touch. On MRI, the lesions were iso intense on T1 in 6 out of 10 cases and were hyper intense on T2 in 7 out of 10 cases and all the layers of the cervix were involved in majority of the cases. The diffusion restriction and heterogeneous enhancement was noted in all the cases. According to the FIGU staging, the stage 1B was noted in 4 cases. Stage 2A was seen in 1 out of 10 cases. Stage 2B was noted in 2 out of 10 cases. 3B was seen in 2 out of 10 cases. And stage 4A was seen in 1 case. On further doing the histopathological examination of these cases. The majority of the cases, 90%, the HP diagnosis was of squamous cell carcinoma, while adenocarcinoma was seen in only 1% of the cases. This is a image of stage 1B. In this, we can see that in image 1, it, a T2 heterogeneous mass lesion is seen in the posterior wall of cervix and the lesion is not extending into the upper, upper part of the vagina. If this is a T1 weighted images and it, this, the lesion is iso intense. 
while in the contrast post contrast images there is heterogeneous enhancement of the mass lesion on and the stage 1b was given to the lesion so on mri the predominant signal intensity was noted to be of uh, uh, was iso intense on t1 hyper intense on t2 and it was similar to the description that was given by linange and hor hermit the heterogeneous contrast enhancement was seen in all the cases and according to the fio staging 1b was the most common stage that was seen in present study and the cases of 2b and 3b was seen in two cases was squamous cell carcinoma was the most most common histopathological diagnosis and the most of the cases were treated by radical hysterectomy